Sure, my, my name is Dr. Matthews Chaco. Uh, I am uh, an assistant professor of medicine. Uh, I am a, uh, one of the staff interventional cardiologists and serve as the director of peripheral vascular interventions at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. So the, the topic at hand is the role of uh, renal uh, artery ablation in uh, the treatment of uh, essential hypertension. And the importance of this um, has been brought to light uh, recently with, with uh, a recent paper that was uh, published in uh, uh, the journal The Lancet um, uh, very recently. So in terms of the, the pathophysiology of essential hypertension, uh, the, the, the etiology or the mechanisms are, uh, are actually unclear. It is thought that, that s the sympathetic nervous system uh, does play a role. Uh, the, the renal, uh, the kidneys are, are involved or thought to be involved um, in, in many respects. Uh, specific to this uh, paper uh, are the, the sympathetic innervation of the, the kidneys. Uh, the um, efferent uh, sympathetic uh, fibers that, that run to the kidney uh, are thought to influence uh, sodium uh, reabsorption at the level of the renal tubule, thought to impact renal blood flow, and thought to impa impact uh, the release of renin from the kidney. And the afferent uh, uh, sympathetic fibers uh, that, that um, uh, go back to the central nervous system are thought to inf influence or modulate uh, central uh, uh, um, sympathetic outflow. So the, the study um, uh, being discussed uh, was um, based on the application of radiofrequency ablation uh, energy um, along the length of uh, the bilateral renal arteries. Uh, this is done through a six French catheter uh, that uh, was developed um, uh, uh, through a company in, in, uh, in California. And uh, the essential idea is that, that this catheter has a preformed tip uh, is delivered uh, within the, uh, the main renal arteries on both sides and um, uh, four to six uh, bursts of uh, um, low-level energy are applied to the renal artery uh, with the idea that, that it affects uh, uh, um, uh, or somehow modulates the uh, renal sympathetic uh, fibers that run in the adventitia of the vessel. So in terms of the efficacy outcomes of the trial, the main endpoint of uh, this specific trial was uh, seated office blood pressure measurement at uh, six months. They had a run-in phase of about two weeks of intensive blood pressure monitoring as well as um, uh, office-based and home-based uh, blood pressure measurements uh, at, um, at one, three, and six months. And they had ambulatory blood pressure measurements uh, at the inception of the study and then at six-month uh, follow-up. The outcomes were that, that there was an early um, uh, and sustained reduction in um, uh, blood pressure, uh, in systolic blood pressure as well as diastolic blood pressure, uh, in those that underwent uh, renal denervation with the application of radiofrequency energy through this catheter system. Uh, at, uh, at one month, I believe the, the uh, blood pressure drop was approximately 20 uh, millimeters mercury uh, systolic in the treated group. At, at three months, it was 24 millimeters mercury um, in the, the treated group. And then at six months, it was uh, uh, approximately 30, uh, 32 or 33 millimeters mercury uh, systolic in the treated group, compared to really uh, no drop in blood pressure in those treated medically. So early, um, uh, early procedural concerns um, would, be, would be important to note. And these would include things like vascular access site complications, uh, which in this trial they had one pseudoaneurysm uh, that, that required treatment. And then uh, uh, damage to the, the renal artery or the kidney itself, and these would include things like uh, renal artery dissection, uh, renal artery perforation uh, or injury from thermal injury uh, through the application of radiofrequency energy, um, aneurysms uh, uh, from weakening of the, the renal artery wall, uh, thrombosis uh, uh, during the procedure, um, and then, and then uh, kidney failure um, uh, uh, or uh, hemodynamic effects uh, such as an acute drop in blood pressure uh, following, uh, following this procedure. In this uh, particular trial, uh, the, the early complications uh, were, were very few and, uh, uh, and certainly not major. Uh, so at least in terms of safety, um, uh, they were able to demonstrate, uh, demonstrate that in this trial without any major um, adverse uh, complications. 
they did note um, um, bradycardia uh, intraprocedurally uh, that recorded re report that required uh, treatment with um, atropine uh, in a minority of patients, but that that was self-limited. Uh, beyond that, there did not appear to be any great hazard in using this uh, catheter-based uh, system. Sure, it, it is um, certainly uh, a trial uh, that has a lot of potential. Hypertension is something that, that affects um, uh, 30 to 40 percent uh, of people and, and has uh, a lot of downstream consequences in terms of um, cerebrovascular disease and stroke, uh, uh, congestive heart failure, uh, um, uh, and, and kidney disease and kidney failure. And so uh, anything uh, that, that um, uh, is safe and potentially effective in controlling uh, 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 someone's blood pressure and reducing the risk of these downstream complications would be uh, tremendously important. I think uh, in terms of this specific trial, uh, they have demonstrated uh, at least uh, at, at some level safety uh, as well as feasibility, um, but, but long-term durability uh, you know, is obviously a question. Uh, this is a, a very small trial of just uh, 106 patients uh, followed for just uh, six months. And although the, the outcomes uh, are, are impressive in terms of an early and sustained drop in blood pressure, um, you know, whether this pans out to have any long-lasting meaningful effects I think remains to be seen. Uh, the one uh, procedural uh, complication that uh, I think will need to be monitored for uh, would be um, uh, renal artery stenosis uh, from potentially thermal injury. Um, this, this is seen in the electrophysiology world in, in cardiology in, in uh, those that undergo uh, uh, radiofrequency uh, ablation of their uh, pulmonary veins for atrial fibrillation. And um, in some series, there, is, uh, there are about one in four patients uh, that develop uh, this complication, which can uh, and more often occurs early but can occur late, so this will be, need to be something uh, that, that is, um, is uh, monitored for uh, over time uh, as this uh, catheter-based system to treat essential hypertension, um, uh, 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 if it pans out, um, uh, will need to be surveyed. Uh, but it is an important trial, and uh, it, it certainly begs the question uh, as to uh, uh, when a large uh, uh, scale uh, international multi-centered um, uh, randomized controlled trial would be done um, uh, comparing uh, uh, a strategy of, of uh, radiofrequency ablation versus medical therapy. Uh, the one criticism of the trial I would have is that, that those that, that underwent medical therapy did not undergo a sham, uh, a sham procedure, uh, so there, there may be uh, some element of, of bias or placebo uh, that, that is involved that is undetected. Uh, and in a large scale, um, a randomized clinical trial uh, utilizing uh, this technique, this might be something uh, important to consider. But in, in total, uh, I feel it's an important study. Uh, certainly makes one pause uh, to um, uh, uh, think that, that this uh, may, the, may be the brink of a whole new uh, way or paradigm shift in terms of treating those with essential hypertension.